Hey, Lee here helping you become a better plant parent. I did not like any of the moss pole designs I could find on YouTube, so I had to make my own. I'm gonna show you all the different ways that you can use these to prove once and for all that these are the best design and will save you the most amount of time. The most challenging part of moss poles is knowing how to extend them, and let me show you why this is the easiest method. I have my philodendrons blended. As you can see, it's reached the top of its moss tube, and now all I need to do to extend it is have all my pieces ready. I have my connector piece, I have my moss tube, I have some moss soaking in water ready to go, and I have my double-sided Velcro. You'll wanna put on your connector piece first. Now, even though your plant is going to be touching a section that does not connect with moss, that does not mean your plant is gonna start shrinking. All your plant really needs is a stable surface. So once your connector is attached, again, you wanna take your plant tie or whatever you're using to attach it to make sure that it's still sturdy and secure to your climbing surface, which right now is just plastic, but that's okay too. So once that's done, you take your next piece of your moss tube, put it on top, and from there, you're pretty much ready to go. You just need to start filling in a little bit of your moss right here. And because my moss has been soaking, I just take a handful and I put it up in here. Again, because of the way this moss tube is shaped, it's not going to slide down your moss tube and you don't actually need to fill in the entire thing with moss because you can just fill it in slowly as it grows. And using this method is done in just a couple of seconds. So now you're ready to put your first plant on one of these moss tubes. You might have a bottom piece, you definitely have a connector, and you should have your long moss tube piece. So first things first, pick a plant. I am picking the Monstera adansoniae. I think this is a really good candidate for this tube because the stem stays pretty thin, even when the leaves are extremely large, and it's really easy to tell which part is the backside of the plant. It's always helpful to root your plants, better roots, better start to your plant. But let me take this out, show you what I'm working with. So I actually want two separate cuttings in the same pot, climbing up the same tube. These are both top cuttings, which is really important to having a good start as well. So first things first, let's get our six inch pot that I want to start with and I have the bottom piece. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna attach the connector so that piece is ready to go. Okay. It just balances there in the bottom and I can start putting a little bit of soil into the pot. Not too much, still need room for the plant. Okay, so when you're going for the Monstera adansoniae, it's important to identify the back side of the plant because the back of the plant is where the aerial roots will be and the aerial roots need to dig into the moss. So if your plant is facing the wrong way, you're not gonna have a great looking plant. So this is the back of my plant. I can tell because all along this face, is aerial roots. Aerial roots here, aerial roots here, aerial roots up here. If I turn to the front of the plant, you mostly cannot see any of these aerial roots and the leaves should be either facing to the side or facing forward, which is what you have here. Same thing with this cutting here. This is the back of the plant. I can see all the aerial roots pointing towards the camera in the same direction. If I turn it this way, this is the front of the plant. All of the leaves are facing forwards. All of the aerial roots are facing towards me. So uh, let's get these plants in. I want to make sure that the aerial roots are facing towards me this direction because when I put the moss tube on like this, the moss is going to go in this channel right here. So first plant coming in. 
and it's totally okay just to have it balance. Second plant coming in. Okay, just like that. There we go. Okay, aerial roots should be facing the right direction for both of these plants. I'm actually going to put the larger one in the front a little bit. Okay, so now that they're in the right direction, I can continue filling in the rest of my pot with soil. It can also sometimes help to have maybe like a chopstick or something just to make sure that you're filling in all of the spaces so that there's no uh, air pockets in your plant pot. Okay, almost done. One more scoop. Okay, so this is all ready. Now, uh, next piece, your moss tube coming on the top. It really depends on what you wanna do with this. If you want, you can fill in the entire tube first, then stick it on top, then tie your plants back. You could also stick your tube in first and then just fill in the moss this way. I'm going to stick the tube in first be just because it looks better on camera because of the angle. So I'm going to get this piece in. Here we go. All sturdy. And then I'm going to start filling in the moss. So my moss has been soaking. Uh, make sure it's really wet. You don't really need to squeeze out a huge amount of water because as always your moss pool will dry out eventually. So start putting it in the chamber and I usually like to start kind of like at the midpoint and then slide it down. Um, that way I can make sure that it's all bunched up properly and the right amount of moss is in there just in case I need to fill in some more. So like I said, um, this moss tube is great because you don't need any of the mesh to keep the, the moss in there. And I always get concerned because when I see other channels with the more traditional method of putting a stick in there and then putting moss on top of the stick and then wrapping it in some kind of chicken wire or other kind of netting, um, I notice that when, they, when it's time to come and take out the plant, Oftentimes they either have to rip the roots to get it out or they have to cut the wire and I'm not about wasting time like that to have to restring or redo an entire uh, moss pole just because I'm trying to get a plant out. It should be modular and it should be reusable and if you can't if you can't get those two things, then I feel like it's not a good use of time, not a good use of materials. So another good thing is that if you actually run out of moss, you can just stop here. Like you don't need to go all the way to the top. Um, sometimes it's even better because when you're soaking your moss pole, you don't actually need to get everything from the top. You can just start soaking it from the position where the plant has grown to and as your plant grows you just fill in more moss as the as the plant grows. But with that method you do have to keep a watchful eye because if you're lazy and then you forget to fill in the rest of your moss pole then your plant can start to um, it can start to run it will run inside the tube and eventually try to uh, cling to the tube, which is not that bad, but it's probably not what you're looking for. Now, just tying back the plant, making sure to get it as close to the tube as you can. With this smaller one, um, it's not tall enough to, to reach the moss just yet, so tying it to the tube is necessary. 
but again, as long as your plant is sturdy, it's going to produce larger leaves. So you really don't have to worry about it being in the moss necessarily right away. You just need to make sure that it's sturdy and that the growth pattern will make sure that it continues to grow towards the moss. Okay, and with the larger cutting, same thing. Add it here and just need to secure it. Okay, and it's all done. That was quick, wasn't it? Now, the other thing that you need to think about is how you want to water your moss pole. You can use the traditional method of getting a water bottle, poking a hole in it, putting your water or your nutrient solution, and thus uh, flipping it upside down and then having it drain like that. I tend not to like this method that much because it takes a long time. So what I actually did was I purchased this automatic sprayer. Uh, this is USB charged battery powered. And I really like it because if I do this maybe every two days, it stays pretty moist. Uh, it has this trigger on the bottom. You pull the trigger, it sprays, and then you just go up and down. And then it keeps the majority of the moss moist. And it takes much less time than the water bottle on top method. Oh God. Okay, that's the only thing you have to worry about, accidental presses, because you have to hold it for like two seconds before it turns on, hold it two seconds before it turns off. So one thing you gotta be careful about. Anyway, it's done. See, it looks great. And just to be very clear, you do not need a moss pole. All your plant needs is a stable surface to climb and that will help it mature. The plant that I struggled with most to mature is this Monstera Akakoya goensis. I thought that giving it a moss pole would help, but in fact, the only real deciding factor was giving it more light. I have two of these plants, one on a moss pole, one on a birch bark pole, that are getting the same amount of light, and of course, they're maturing at about the same speed. The only main difference is I have to spend a lot more time managing the moisture of this moss pole so that my roots don't dry out. One thing that we're rarely shown is removing a plant from a moss pole, and I'm pretty sure that's because it involves actually cutting the wires and undoing all of the work that you've just done. So let's actually do that with my epiprenum skeleton key. One thing that you might notice is that there's no longer any supports on the bottom of this moss pole, so all we need to do is take off the few supports that are left at the top. So I'm removing the entire plant from the moss pole. So our whole plant is off, what do we do from here? I want to find a fairly good section to take the top half, move it to the bottom half. So I have to find a place that has some pretty decent roots. So I found my perfect spot right here. I'm going to give it a cut. And now I've got my entire new section. I'm going to remove the top half of this moss pole. I just need to backfill this middle section right here, the place where the connector was blocking me from putting any moss. And now my tube is ready to go again with these super long roots right here. I'm gonna put these roots directly into soil, so I just need to remove some of the moss. Now that this skeleton key is all potted up, let's move on to the air layering. If you don't like to use the bottom section of these moss tubes, that's completely okay. It will get tangled up, but there is a simple solution. All you need to do is make your cut and then pull it off. You still have some plants left, you still have some roots, this will regrow as soon as it's potted into a smaller pot. Now that this is out, let's separate the roots from the soil and the moss, and I have my trusty chopstick that'll help make this process much faster. So just quickly, I managed to get about 90% of the moss off. Let's see how many cuttings we have. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
I didn't need to cut any wires and destroy my moss poles. I didn't need to make a new one. I still have all of the pieces of my old moss pole. I'll just give this a wash and I can keep reusing it over and over and over. Making these moss poles by myself took about two hours and unless I want to paint them or repaint them, I will never have to put in a single minute of making another one of these ever again. They're completely modular, they're completely reusable, and they're not actually that difficult to make, even if you're not an expert at power tools. I wanna to shout out a couple of my followers who are actually able to make these amazing moss tubes within a matter of days of me posting that first tutorial, which wasn't really even that detailed. Even if you're not an expert in power tools, these moss tubes are something that you can do in one single afternoon that will literally last you an entire lifetime. And I really need to shout out this amazing comment that I received that's just, ugh, beautiful. I'm pretty sure they follow me. Do you? I'll see you next time.